Greetings and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Neverwinter Nights. All right. So we've just we've just interrogated the old partner of Dergiab. So I think it's time to finally meet the big guy in face to face after we oh, clear out the rest of his army. <laughs> Now, is there anything threateningly enough in here that I might want to use a potion or a spell? Let's see. I think this way leads away from the gap at the moment. Just some more goblins and other champions to fight. <laughs> tools. <laughs> More fighters. figure out what taunt is used for, but I can't uh, can't do it if they die too quickly. And against most big enemies I think it's probably a waste of time. More bolts that I don't want. Okay, okay. Alright. What are you doing? Nope, stop that. Okay, okay. Where do you think you're going? Okay, the chest is over there. Regular scimitar. Well, I don't use scimitars, so that's not really of any use. Alright, so we have a straight look into Durgiab's treasure chamber, it looks like. With a portal. That's fancy. For an ogre. I guess I have to taunt before I attack. I love this part! Yeah, not the most toughest of taunts. There's probably a mod around that will give you better taunts. Or inserted taunts from Monkey Island, that would be most fun. Although, probably not all that fitting. My passing left entire islands devastated. Yeah, uh, without the witty repartee, it doesn't really work. Oh, damn it! You know, you're almost not worth bringing back, you know that? But I will. Because you actually are worth bringing back. Alright, let's take the Alexandrites. 
Let's go retrieve our slave. Minion, henchman. It was so strange. Person I have contracted to die for me. I guess technically that makes him a gladiator. More goblins. Let's put this back in here because I still want to be able to tell him that. Hey, stop! Hey, stop drinking my potions. Tell me your technicality, technicality that you currently have them. I think that's the last defense before Durgia. Time to finally face the big guy up front and in person. Thieves tools. Nope. Not that were useful. I'll take them though. Uh, oops. That's not what I wanted to do. And darts. Identify darts. That's a rarity. Right. So, from the looks of things, this is probably where it all goes down. So, let the buffing commence. Alright. Box skin for me. Box skin for you. Here, have a potion of Cat's Grace. And. Potion of speed. Let's have a potion of endurance. Actually, put the game on hold for our search for what I need. Alright, so we have bark skin. I just drink a bless. I don't think I need anything else immediately. Alright. Divine Favor. Deafening Clang. Aura of Glory! We save. We enter. We kill. Ouch. <laughs> Kill Ganon. Come on, I'm losing buffs over here. I smite you! I got into... He's not evil! Oh, come on! Here comes Halfling Death! Alright. Hopefully this will be in time. But at least it forced their attention away from him. Alright, that's Dirk Yap down. Let's just mop up. Right, short 
Depot plus one. Potions we use to sell, so we'll double X, alright, then you go there. Helmet and the head of Durgy App, of course. Alright, some gold pieces. Neat. And that was the fearsome leader of the orcs. Or uh, of the monsters north of Port Last. Alright, that looks like there's nothing hidden back here. Let's let's check the chest in front of the house. Master Tommy, is it trapped? Apparently not. A Warhammer plus one. And Ganon Journal. I've grown... I find I've grown fond of the monsters in these caves. They are savage, violent, and easily whipped into a frenzy by my puppet ogre the mage Durgiab. Not entirely unlike the rest of us who, who have turned following Morgrim into a religion. He, the puppeteer, we, his willing puppets. And to think he sent me here to search for some ancient artifact as he sent my brothers to Charwood and the Neverwinter Wood. It isn't in this place. It would have left some telltale sign. It would want to be found. It would call me it call, it would call me to it. Perhaps they would have better luck in the two woods. So instead of being a puppet, I've become the puppeteer. Not so grand as Morgrim, but even so. Look how Durgeb struts and schemes at my bidding. Mm. Well, that doesn't tell us where the cult is based, but it's at least a start. No, oh, whoops. There's no need to go in there, because I think those houses are just uh, facades. Okay, okay. Open that up, please. In the meantime... Can I identify this? No. Let's see. How about this? No. And nothing here needs identifying. Good. Let's go. Chest number one. Eee, give a potion to Tommy. I like playing this game. It's done. Alright, now unlock okay, it. Okay. Ah, no can do. Alright. Great sword. That's useless to me. Damn it. Oh, thank you, Tommy. Just for a copper ring, that's not really worth it either way. But we are out of here. Enter the portal. And we are up here. Well, that's pretty much where we entered. Alright, let's go back to Gerald. He'll be happy that we have returned his wife to him. And we've got some stuff to unload. told about them monsters bothering us around here? The ones who took my wife, Leah. Do you bring word? I see Leah made it back safely. That she did. She has returned safe and sound, which is more than even I thought possible. Thank you, lad. I shall be forever grateful. I hope this bit of gold will do us a reward. Well, I think your wife's safety is worth more than that, no? I perhaps you are right. Here, lad, let me give you a little more. And that's all I have. Is there something else? The monster's leader, Durgiap, is dead. I have his head. That's a relief, then, to be sure. We'll have none of his terrorizing anyone else in these parts. Thank you, lad. I hope this bit of gold will do us a reward. I think killing Durgiap is worth a bit, a bit larger reward, no? Well, I doubt any gold I might have would compare with what I, the Ogre Mage himself had. I did send you that way. This is all the extra I can spare. Is there something else? I'll be on my way. I do be careful if you go into the hills then, lad. I wish you well. Uh, what about you, Leia? If you're done staring Thank at the wall? Thank you so much for all you have done. 
Nope, nothing new. Right then. Let's go back to port last. Now that we have something to tell Erebeth. Now of course you don't have to do that. In fact I mean not to do that at all actually, but... For this first bit it's not so in important since it's not leading directly to a place where we need to go. Uh, so let's just go back, uh, let's go in here. And have a little bit of a talk. I am pleased to see that you remain safe, my friend. Lord Nasher tells me he is confident of your success, though I do worry at the danger in which you place yourself. Indeed. Have you yet discovered any new information on the cult? You look tired. Have you not been sleeping well? Why do you ask me that? The spy master put you up to this, didn't he? No, he didn't. I see. I suppose my state is obvious enough. Aaron is far more concerned than is warranted, however. Certainly a few bad dreams are not a reason to become alarmed. The servants claim I speak in my sleep and say frightening things. They creep about me cautiously, like I have gone mad. And Aaron pays their superstitious twitterings far more heed than he should. After all that has happened with the plague and... and Fenthic, I think a disturbing dream or two is not so surprising, wouldn't you agree? Well, these dreams are disturbing enough to keep you from sleep. Now you too? Has the world gone mad or is it me? These dreams are disturbing and frightening, but they shall pass. They are my burden to bear and no one else's. Well, that's just asking for trouble. Why don't you tell me about these dreams? Maybe it will help. Perhaps you are right. Having the perspective of another on these dreams may not be a bad idea. Indeed it's not. I... I am falling in the dream. Always falling. Surrounded by a heavy blackness which chokes and drowns me. Grasping hands reach out to me. And the voices. A cacophony of whispers that plead to me for help. And... And then I see a shrouded figure. It is Fenthic. He is walking away from me. And I run to catch him. But always he eludes me in the darkness. The voices get so much louder. They are accusing me, blaming me, and I... I feel ashamed, though I do not know what I am being blamed for. I cry out for help, for them to stop their assault, but I go unheeded. And then I catch up to the figure, and I see that it is not Fenthic. He turns and gazes at me with sad eyes, and I know it is Tyr, and then my god turns his back on me. These... these are my dreams. Perhaps now you can understand why I have not wished to discuss them. I am frightened of what they may mean. Well, that's understandable. They would frighten me as well. That's kind of you to say. I am glad I told you, at least. It makes the dream seem a bit smaller now. I do feel better for it. Thank you. <laughs> I am reminded a little of how I was introduced to the Paladin life. You should ask me to tell you the tale sometime. Until then, however, let's return to the subject of your task. That is something we can focus on, at least. Well, I have located some information about the cult. This is good news. What have you discovered? I'll show her the journal. So the cult was responsible for stirring up the humanoids in the hills? You are to be commended for putting an end to that danger indeed. Indeed. While this information you bring is incredibly valuable, it still does not tell us where the cult is based. We need that information if we are to strike at them. Fortunately, it does mention where more cultists may be found. Charwood and the Neverwinter Woods. Search those places, perhaps, for the information we seek. Have you found any other information? Nope. Then I wish you luck. And since this episode is going to go long anyway... The gods smile on us that you remain yet unharmed for your efforts. With luck, success shall soon follow. I would rather talk about something Aye. else. What would you have of me? 
How did you become a spy master for Lord Nasher? That is a curious question, my friend. Nor does it have a simple answer, if the truth be known, and is not a tale that I care to often tell. I'd still like to hear the tale. As you wish, my friend. Though I'll not be held responsible should you nod off during the telling of it. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Perhaps it is best if I ask you a question first. You are a person of your god, are you not? That's a curious way of phrasing that, but yes. How is it that you came into your calling? Was it an accident? Was it born purely of talent? Do you believe you were fated to be what you are? I have always had a talent for what I do. It must be a fine thing to be sure of one's abilities. I envy you that. For most, the destination is never clear until they arrive. Indeed. I myself started life as a slave in the southern deserts of Kalamshan. Never would I have foreseen that I might become who I am today. I knew of the lush and wild jungles of my homeland, Chult, only through the bedtime tales of my mother. I have never laid eyes upon its shore. My mother was owned by a most vicious and cruel caliph. As a slave child, one learns to stay out of sight and to move silently, lest one be beaten. Moreover, I learned to listen. I listened to the chatter of the servants, the bored talk of the guards. For many, many years, I was the shadow in the caliph's halls. For all my hiding, however, I proved of no use to anyone but myself. I could not save my mother, when the Caliph beat her to death for spilling a tankard of his mead, for instance. Well, you were a child. What could you have done? I blamed myself regardless, as the young often do. In grief and anger, I stabbed and killed the Caliph, and was subsequently chased into the streets of Kalimpur. You murdered him? How could you? I am not proud of what I did. It is very easy to say that the man deserved it. Deserved it more than my mother did, at the very least. Perhaps. Who am I to say that this is so, however? I was no righteous judge that day. I acted out of retribution and became a wanted murderer, in truth. There is no denying that. So I shall not. I fled into the shadows of the city, and was not alone there. I found many who I will call allies and not friends. For we acted in unison only to survive. Indeed. The law pursued me, so always I remained hidden and listened as I once had. The fact that I was a thief to remain alive did not help. And eventually, even the shadows of the city were no longer safe for me. I sought passage out of the city. And eventually, a captain took pity on me and gave me a position aboard his ship. Perhaps you have heard of Randall the Red? Well, I have heard of him. He was a notorious pirate. Aye, that he was. A pirate whose reputation along the Sword Coast was more than deserved. I joined his crew, though I was no pirate in truth. Hmm? I was not fond of drink as the other sailors were, and instead spent my time at each port making new contacts and listening. Over the years, Randall grew to depend on my skill. He gave me gold to establish informants throughout the coast, and I heard news the instant it happened. So basically, you were his Twitter account. It was I who kept Randall safe and one step ahead of his pursuers, for always would I know before the chase was on us. Hmm. You kept the vicious pirate alive? Aye. I was his master of spies, though I would not have put a name to it at the time. I was grateful for Randall's kindness, for despite his reputation, he was an easy man to like. I was not fond of the looting and pillaging Randall indulged in, and did my best to subtly steer him away from the worst of it. Randall knew what I was doing, and permitted it only because I was otherwise invaluable to him. He cared not if I cringed and turned a cheek when the crew plied the worst of their bloody trade. As the years passed, I came into a certain amount of my own fame along the Sword Coast. 
My life was my life, and I was satisfied with it, and discharged my duty as best I knew. It was not until I encountered Lord Nasher that my life would change forever. That, however, is another tale. Ask me of it sometime, my friend. Well, thank you for telling me. And thank you for listening. As I said, it is not a tale I tell often. Back to more important matters. Is there something you needed? Nope, I'll be I, going. I shall hope that the gods keep you safe, my friend. They certainly shall. Thank you all for watching. See you all next time.